Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Rob and today we are going to be painting a Crutox Rampager. Uh, I don't know about you, um, but I absolutely love these models uh, when they came out. Um, yeah, absolutely fell in love with them and wanted to uh, paint at least one. Um, but I don't dabble in much 40k, so I uh, just picked up this one and this is the only one I'm going to do. And I wanted to do some contrasting colours with the orange... Uh, rider and then the uh the blue beast that it is riding um so today i'm going to show you how to paint it now if you're not familiar with the channel uh, or if this is your first time watching these videos uh it's pretty simple all i do is just show you how to paint uh paint something there's no a and b reel there's nothing fancy you won't see me it's just if you want to know how to paint something this is the video for you so this is going to be quite an in-depth one today it's going to be a longer one than usual, uh, but hopefully I'm going to show you all the parts that you will need. So we're going to start off with the uh, model uh, and I'm just going to prime it black. And then from above, I just primed it with white just to get those volumes um, and kind of so I could understand the volumes of the model as well. I kind of sprayed it at a 45 degree angle all the way around. And then we're going to go straight in with our blue. Now, this is a uh, tidal blue. And this is from the new um, Army Painter Fanatic range. Um, the coverage is pretty good. I would say, though, that it's best to use two thin coats than just use one kind of thick, solid coat. There's lots of details on this model that we don't want to miss out on. Um, and as you can see, it's better, yeah, better to keep it smooth, as I say. A really nice colour. Um, but this is really actually rather than being our base color, this is actually going to be our mid-tone and we're going to then shade it down. So what we'll do is we'll add the mid-tone first, then we'll shade it down and then we'll build it back up from the mid-tone and then onwards towards our highlights. We're going to use Molten Lava, which is a color that I keep on coming back to within the Fanatic range. So if you're thinking, oh, well, you know, I don't need to buy the whole range uh i just need to pick up maybe some colors but i don't know which one to get i'd really recommend picking up molten orange or sorry molten lava this is one as i say i keep on coming back to over and over again it's a great uh, orange color for things like eye lenses you know reds combined with the the oranges uh, as a highlight it's really good mixed in with kind of any browns because it can make a really awesome um kind of like rust uh, and you know can make a really intense rust effect in some places as well but as i say with this uh particular paint i would always do two thin coats instead of doing one thick uh thick coat because obviously on this rider in particular there's lots of small fine details that we do not want to uh, miss out on i you can see me doing the kind of like the spines coming from the back of his head i wasn't totally sure what color i was, I was going to do though so i included those within the the painting of the orange now I'm going to combine scarab green here and tidal blue together and this is going to be almost a wash and what I've done is I've mixed it with a little bit of glaze medium. Now you can mix it with a little bit of uh, any kind of medium that you might have, uh, a little bit of airbrush thinner, you know something, you could even mix it with water if you wanted to but as I say I've used glaze medium here um, because I wanted to build this up in the shadows and just tint the overall colour of the model. So I've just mixed a little bit of 50-50 with these two colours. Um, and you can see here that rather than, say, adding black in or going you know, down a darker blue route, I've decided to go with a with a darker green combined with that tidal blue colour. And then essentially all I'm going to do here is very carefully cover the entire model with this glaze all over. Now, this is... Yeah, what you might describe as a, a soft shade uh, but because it's a glaze uh, it the glaze medium will slow down the drying process so if you're using it for the first time and going wow this is taking a long time to dry it does take a long time to dry but it's a, a much softer look than say you know adding a wash all over because washes can have quite a staining effect whatever kind of washes that you use but doing this in this kind of quite controlled way is a good way just to create some soft shading and it's up to you depending on how deep you want this recesses and how dark you want these recesses to be you could add multiple layers and do a, a deeper shade of this uh, color overall uh, but it's completely up to you I in the end did this twice so I left it to dry and then did it did a second pass of it uh, as well so it kind of just tinted the color 
that tidal blue color slightly um uh but came, gave a good effect overall right we're going to go with molten lava mixed in with this brown color this again is another uh, brown color that i keep on coming back to but as you can see here we're just making a glaze in a very similar way that we did before so i've just got a little bit of glaze medium here i'm just mixing it together and then i will um put this all over the orange of the crute model uh with this one though because there were so many gaps and things like that you know i didn't need two coats i just needed one coat for this one and this just kind of like rested in all the recesses that you might want and might expect as I say, though, you can do another deeper shade of this just by going over either any particular areas or just washing it all over. For this video, I've just kept it super simple and I've just gone, I'm going to do it all over. Uh, but if I was being a little bit more careful uh, and if I didn't have a camera in between me and the actual model, I might be a little bit more careful in terms of just focusing around the you know the shades the around the biceps just to darken those areas down but as i say i'm just using it as an all over wash all over glaze okay now we're going to go back to tidal blue uh i'm going to go backwards and forwards here between these two just while one is drying we can do the do the uh do the blue as i say it takes a little little while to dry when you've um added a little bit of uh glaze medium in because it's uh, yeah it's a it's a retarder basically it slows down the the uh, drying process um, of the actual paint so what you can see me doing here is going in with this tidal blue color back again now you can see the difference between the actual color that i'm laying down and then where it's been tinted by glaze now the jump between the two isn't massive but what i really want to do is stay away from all the crevices in the armor, all those uh, kind of like the deepest recesses within the muscles of this particular uh, model and just hit the broadest areas where I think the light would hit it. We can though keep this nice and broad, this highlight, just leaving the darkest areas in, the re in, in, uh, in shadow and leaving it alone. But as you can see, the jump isn't that vast because we've used a little bit of glaze medium. Uh, in order to create a kind of our, our wash so this is a good way to rather than starting from a very very dark uh to light uh, you know going from dark to light this is a good way start with a medium and then wash or glaze it down and then we can go back to the to the medium uh, the mid tone that we've got and then we can go on to our highlights as well and the same will be for the orange color for the actual crute itself okay we're going to go to our next highlight color now so this is frost blue and as you can see, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add frost blue into tidal blue. And what you can see me doing here is just adding more and more frost blue in. And you can start to see the kinds of tones that I want to create. And this is the way I'm going to work through. Now, I haven't included every single element of um, me adding in the frost blue, but you could see the kind of the mixes that I was creating. And at every step along the journey, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to add a little bit more frost blue, add a little bit more frost blue, so we're getting lighter and lighter and lighter. Now, I'm also considering, as I'm applying this paint, uh, the actual muscles themselves. Uh, I want to keep it um, quite bright around areas where I think that light is going to be hitting uh, most. You know, these are the lots of these muscles are kind of. Sil um, lots of these muscles are spheres so they're obviously going to you know the light is going to bounce off them in certain ways but also actually we've when you think about somebody who's got big muscles you know think about the the tension that those muscles will be under you'll be able to see all of the fibers within those muscles and we want to at a later stage create that effect by creating kind of thin lines uh, on particularly onto these kind of like boulder like shoulders that this uh, this this um, creature has got so as I say just go around applying this uh, over your model and then this is going to take some time now what I've done is I've spent a long time on the actual flesh the blue and the orange you know a couple of hours probably yeah probably reasonable to say kind of two hours I think here but then I will take shortcuts at the all the leather stages. So I'll be using a lot of speed paints at the leather stages. So we can afford to do that. Like not everything needs to be a tippity top 
uh, paint job, you can afford to spend a long time on particular parts of a model and then try and cut corners on other parts of the model. Um, but overall, it would you know it will be greater than the sum of its parts. It will still look really really good and, sh and it have a strong effect on the tabletop. Uh, but it's just something to consider. Actually, what's the main portion of this? Well, actually, it's the flesh. So let's get the flesh right, and then we can cut some corners uh, in the other parts of the uh, other parts of the video. And what you can see me doing here is once a part has dried, going back over it just to reinforce that uh, highlight. But I'm being really careful, really being really circumspect about where I'm applying my highlights here as well. Think about where the light is going to be hitting. It was really interesting uh, doing this. So you guys probably know I do an awful lot of uh, heresy models, but I think that if you are watching this and you're somebody who does an awful lot of heresy as well, sometimes it's just good to branch out, go out of your comfort zone a little bit, try some models that you wouldn't usually try, but you'd like the look of and just do a one off. You know, if it, even if it means just buying one model, a single model off eBay or whatever, or the, or um, websites that sell sell bits, sometimes just going out of your comfort zone, practicing uh, other skills or playing around with colors that you don't usually play around with, I think is a really, really valuable thing. So even if you're not going to do a crew army and you're watching this, actually there's some value in just practicing these kind of these flesh skills. And I think the other thing is because it's not flesh in the sense that it's Caucasian flesh, which is what, uh, you know, more often than not, we're practicing when we uh, do the heads on our space marines. You feel that, you know, I think there's less pressure to get it right when you're playing around with these blues on oranges than perhaps when you're doing the face of a model especially you know faces are so teeny tiny sometimes it's very difficult to get the effects you want so practicing flesh on this kind of canvas with these kinds of colors i think you'll feel at least more successful so give it a go i felt really good about kind of doing this model uh, afterwards i was really pleased with it and it was actually just playing around these colors in this model it was a lot of fun to do as well so i think that's something to uh, something to consider now, as you can see here, more and more f frost blue is being added to this particular, uh, to to the tidal blue. And then what I'm doing is I'm just um, adding in, um, kind of starting to add in lines to those models The as the muscles are uh, more and more tense. I'm focusing on the head in particular because uh, people's attention is going to be drawn to the head. Now, what I'm also doing and what you can start to see me do here is pushing pigment towards the uh, top of the particular muscles, especially where there's an area that goes from very dark and then suddenly where there's the deeper shadow, it then goes to very light as well. Now this is quite a stylistic thing, um, but I think it does look good when we've got these kind of big slabs of slabs of muscle with a creature like uh, with a creature like this. I am um, just while we're here, I'm going to talk about the colors. So it's interesting about the colors. I kind of pondered for a little while about exactly what I was going to do. I had done a little bit of research in terms of what how GW had painted painted their crew, and they had come up with an article recently when the new box set dropped, um, kind of explaining how they would go about uh, creating uh, different kinds of kind of crew flesh. Um, Loads of those were really attractive in terms of you know, how to go about them. The yellow one particularly, I was like, oh, that's a really good one. And maybe I could kind of emulate that. But the reason why I've gone for a blue and orange is, of course, because they're contrasting colors. You know, if you look on the color wheel, they are contrasting. And what I, the reason why I've done the main bulk of the model blue is because then, because the majority is blue, is going to make that, orange crew actually pop off the model it's going to make it appear brighter than it would usually do and if you've ever seen you know say a yellow square surrounded by something that's purple it will make the yellow appear brighter than it is in reality and that's what i'm going for here so i'm using contrasting colors specifically in order to make the crew actually just pop off the model um and i think that actually in the end result it it really does perhaps appears brighter than it the actual color suggest in real life just by using a little bit of color theory here and then you can see here this is kind of the finished blue elements 
uh, on the model. And then I did kind of go backwards and forwards, just tightening up little highlights, particularly on the face. You know, you just added highlights here and there. But now you can see me going in with that molten lava color and doing exactly as the same as we did with the blue. Obviously, less time because there's less model. Uh, what you can see me doing here is just uh, hitting the the broadest highlights you know i'm really hitting kind of like 80 percent of the model here uh with this molten lava color and just leaving that brown orange in the in the shadows but this doesn't take too long at all and actually if you wanted a quick paint job like this highlight just here with this molten lava color that's enough like you could just leave it like that and that's enough highlights we're going to use pale sand and molten lava now now rather than using yellow in the highlights what i want to do is almost go for a desaturated orange um the highlights will still pop but i didn't want to go down the yellow route and i was also conscious that i was going to be using yellow in terms of the uh eyes as well so i didn't want to use uh yellow in the highlights here so using something that desaturates the orange i think is a good one and this pale sand color is an excellent color for this in fact you'll keep on um see me coming back to this color over and over again in a moment when we start using our uh our speed paints exactly as we've done before uh we're going in with this uh pale uh pale sand color mixed in with a little bit of the orange uh, and then hitting our highlights and again each time we add a little bit of pale sand in we're you know we are being tighter and tighter with the highlights so where before it was say 80 percent with that molten lava we're then going to 60 percent and then 40 percent and then we've got those tippity top highlights particularly on the faces um and the the tippity top points where the light will be hitting uh the muscles you know those boulder like shoulders on the biceps on the triceps etc etc on the hands so just go in every time you add a little bit of pale sand in you're going to make the highlight tighter and tighter and tighter but it's really important that we keep the shadows where you can see the kind of the brown orange mix has gone into the shadow it's really important that we leave those areas alone just to give some contour to the actual uh, model you know at a distance it's really striking as well that we have those kind of clear contours in as well you know you can see from the actual blue um i'm going to call it a rampager but i'm not entirely sure that's the the correct word for it but you can see that actually from a distance that will look really striking because of the way that we've highlighted because we've got those deep recesses and those these quite bold highlights as well and then we're going to go in you can see here just around the face you know the it, the faces of these models this is where people's attention is going to be drawn to first so you know you can dump quite a lot of pale sand into the orange now and you're going to hit particularly the areas of the face you know the the corners of the face we can create some lines on that almost that beak area um as well to you know to suggest that um it's made out of another you know texture i suppose that it's hardened and then you can see me doing these again these tippity top highlights but we're just being more and more careful and keeping the highlights tighter and tighter as we go you can do uh in these top highlights as well i didn't show it in here but also any fingernails i actually kept them the same and, and toenails for that matter i've actually kept them the same top highlight color as well uh baron june and ancient stone we're going to mix this together in a 50 50 mix and then we are going to hit this kind of chest plate, I would describe it as. Um, and we're going to build this up over several colors. Now, this is obviously going over black. Uh, so, or the majority of it's going over black. So you'll need to be really careful, but you will need two to three thin coats of this to get a solid uh, color. But what i would say is you know be really really careful you can see me with the brush being slow when i do this because i don't want to touch any of the blue that i've done i don't want to have to go back and correct any mistakes as well so you know just be super careful with this i i actually on reflection would suggest doing this off the base um so don't glue it to the base until the very end um because actually it was a little bit hard to get to all these kind of like nooks and crannies and parts underneath in this kind of like this plate on the front of his chest here uh in terms of the glaze or the wash you can see it's exactly the same wash that we use with our croup rider uh which was the orange and uh brown 
uh, mix that we created. It was just on my palette anyway. So I was like, might as well, not, I'm not gonna make a new one. I'll just use that one and it works absolutely fine. And then exactly the same as we did before, you can then just uh, highlight um, that color again, just with that, um, with the Baron June uh, mix that we created from before and just give it a highlight and that's fine. Like it's in shadow. You know, the light can't get to it, so we can keep it nice and simple. Right, now that we've done the flesh, which is the bulk of this video and the bulk of the work that we're going to do on this model, we can now go to the easy stuff. So basically what you can see me doing here is any mistakes, any parts that I've got blue, I'm just going over with matte white paint, and I'm just picking out all of the elements that where I've made a mistake, but also just adding a little bit of highlight to this as well. Because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this, uh, I'm gonna hit this all with speed paint. And we'll talk about this, which speed paints we'll use in a bit. But this is just a really simple way to kind of do leather elements. And as I said before, this is, model is gonna be greater than the sum of its parts. Most of the things that we're gonna be doing now are actually just to do with speed paints. Um, so it's gonna be relatively, uh, relatively straightforward. Hardened leather. A superb paint. Again, if you're looking for singles in terms of your to add to your paint collection, this is the one. Absolutely amazing. Now, this is more on the orange side uh, of the brown spectrum than it is on the ve you know, very kind of like dark wood, I I'd say. But because it's more orangey, it contrasts really well. This leather contrasts really well against the blue armor as well. So uh, it was a really, really nice choice, but also a secret. This is exactly how I do, say, all my Space Marine uh, satchels and things like that, or um, gun holsters. I just you know, base paint it black, roughly highlight it white and then hit it with hardened leather speed paint and it looks it looks great it looks brilliant um, and this is exactly what we're doing here and this will flow into all the nooks and into all the crannies it will actually kind of um, create a good separation between the blue armor and your uh, leather elements as well you know because of the contrast uh, with, with the fact that it's got orange in it uh, but we will pick out some areas in kind of like a black leather uh, just to mix it up it doesn't need to be all brown so i'd suggest looking at particular parts you want in black leather as well so i did the front of the forearms that black leather and then on the actual rider um i did the uh kind of his javelin pouch uh i did that all in uh black as well just to mix it up because we've got yeah fairly similar colors on this model so it's good to just to break things up uh with uh, some black elements this is grim dark or grim black sorry speed paint uh really really nice speed paint uh they go really they go down really smoothly and it's been really good to kind of like practice using these um paints in conjunctions conjunction with the um uh, with the fanatic range as well so what you can see me doing here is i'm highlighting um some of this grim black just to render the shapes uh a little bit now you could if you wanted to just leave it completely you don't need to add um, any highlights to it because obviously the nature of the speed paint it's already kind of like highlighted for you but this just makes the highlights pop now what I've done is I've actually mixed pale sand in with the grim black speed paint and that just creates a nice natural gray color and I'll show you in a bit how exactly I do that but then this just creates a natural highlight for you to highlight all the edges so really easy and really simple to do. Uh, gunner camo, I applied this first, but then I was like, oh, it needs to be a bit more brown. I added uh, a little bit of hardened leather in, in. I would say probably two parts hardened leather to one part um, of that green uh, green speed paint. And then um, just did all the cloth elements on the actual rider, um, this kind of this green color. And exactly the same. So what I'll do is I could, if I wanted to, just leave this. You know, it's already naturally highlighted. I wouldn't need to if I wanted to to go and highlight those things. But actually, I mix that color, that speed paint greenish brown color, in with a little bit of pale sand, and then that just created a really natural highlight color for me to just to pick out some edges, pick out some particular parts on the model, just to render those shapes even further. And in fact, this bit here is going to show you exactly how i'd go about doing it so you've obviously got your uh, grim black speed paint with some pale sand and i predominantly use just pale sand for this yeah you because know, it's it's a it's an off-white you know it's essentially an ivory color and you can see here just mixing the two together 
gives me a really natural looking grey colour and the more pale sand I dump into it, the lighter that highlight will become. So you can see this is exactly what I'm doing here. So on the black elements, these kind of spines or sticking out the back of the head, kind of reminds me of porcupines. What I'm doing is I'm taking a very grey, uh, very dark grey that I've just created with the grim black speed paint mixed in with pale sand and then giving it quite a broad highlight and I'm doing it on the grenades as well. I thought um, black grenades would suggest like an element of stealth. I mean, these <laughs> these rampages don't look very stealthy, but um, I just thought that, you know, sometimes black grenades suggest an element of stealth um, rather than just a, a silver colour. And then what we can do is we can add pale sand into this mix, you know, more and more pale sand, uh, and then keep our highlights tighter and tighter. Um, and then, you know, it's just a natural way to create a, a grey colour uh, that goes you know, from that grim black colour. So, yeah, really, really simple trick. And I would do this on the, the hardened leather elements. Um, I did this on the uh, green elements on the actual rider. And I did this on the black elements as well. So going over to Cobalt Metal now. Cobalt Metal is a really nice bluish colour. And actually, I think it's good representation of the sky, right? You know, this Cobalt Metal colour uh, as a base colour is really nice because, yeah, because it's got some blues in. It reflects the sky really, really nicely. Um, but just another uh, kind of paint to show you guys. I just want fancy used it. I've used it once before i think in a previous video um but again i'm here to show you what the fanatic wrench can do and, and what they look like um when they go down uh, but again you know because it was slightly blue i was like oh this will work perfect because it's going to contrast because most of the the blue metallics are actually around the rider itself like there are parts of the uh blue rampager that has some metallic parts but these are really really small bits whereas most of the silver elements are actually sur surrounding the um the orange of the rider so having some blue metallics in there i thought would look really nice uh then we're going to use a strong skin shade just to give it kind of like a almost like a greenish hue a dirty greenish hue when it went down i wasn't expecting it to look green and it did and then i was like oh maybe it's going to reflect the jungle floors and things like that so you know parts of it is reflecting the sky the other parts uh, are reflecting the uh, the jungle floor which is you know what i had in mind for kind of like a basing scheme um, but also it gives it just a dirty you know a dirty look and then here what you can see me doing is highlighting the silver now i've just mixed in a little bit of mithril silver into uh, the cobalt uh, silver color and then that's enough for a highlight so you can see me just rendering the the center of this slightly curved panel on the front and then just giving it some edge highlights as well so onto the eyes glowing inferno uh, we lay that down first i actually painted this uh, oak brown the actual the entire entirety of the eye oak brown uh, and then I went in with Glowing Inferno, which you can see here. And then finally with Warped Yellow. And luckily there weren't any pupils to paint. It was just a, a yellow colour. And I did this uh, for both the actual rider and the, the beast he's riding. And then we're going on to the base. So I just applied like a, a red brownish texture uh, colour. But I wanted to create kind of like a, a jungle floor. So I wanted some greens and browns within there. So this is just a super quick way uh, to create some greens and browns. So take uh, your brown colour and then we're going to mix it with uh, Eternal Hunt. Just to make a, a very dark, dark green colour. Um, you're going to thin that right down with a little bit of water. And then we're just going to put this in patches over the base but also we can create kind of like a mossy effect on the uh, stone by doing this on the top of the stone and what I will do is I'll just work my way through those green colors you know up through eternal hunt uh, into uh, emerald forest and right up to rainforest you know just thin it right down and then just put splotches and splotches blats onto the uh, actual base itself and then onto the uh, rock just to give an idea of you know there's a mossy forest floor and then most of it anyway it doesn't 
need to look too smart or too neat because most of it's actually going to be covered up uh, by uh, some tufts. So what you can see here, I've got some swamp tufts, I've got some highland tufts, and I used a couple of other tufts that I had kind of like laying around the remnants of uh, some green tufts that I had laying around and just absolutely saturated the base with these tufts. You, of course, don't have to, but I just thought the whole vibe of the model just, you know, felt to me like it needed some saturated colours and I thought, you know, I had a green base uh, and I wanted to go with, you know, green swamp greens in terms of the actual tufts themselves. But use a mixture here. Uh, don't just use a single colour. You know, grab yourself a, a, a mixture of tufts and I think it looks really strong. You know, the whole vibe is just like a brightly coloured model, right? You know, it's very... Yeah, it's gonna absolutely pop off the table. So there's no need we need to do say like a like a desert base or whatever. I think that yeah, really go go all in with these uh these these bright greens on the bases. And then we're gonna go to do your uh the rim of the model. This is just a I've just done black, but you could of course do a brown. But I think a black for this particular model looks uh looks smarter but yeah we're almost there now there's just one part of this model that i want to show you uh, you know it's probably worth reflecting at this point if you stuck around to the end of the video you know i as i said before i don't do a lot of 40k models certainly not anything like this this is really outside my wheelhouse but actually i learned a lot from doing it and actually, most importantly, it was just a lot of fun. So I would really recommend just picking up one of these, you know, playing around some colours that you don't usually play around with, even if it's just to practice some flesh, you know, practice painting like muscles and things like that. You know, it's low stakes. Doesn't It's not for an army. You know, it's just a one-off model, but it's a lot of fun. And I really recommend just giving it a go, especially with these ones. They're, they're, they're really fun uh, models and actually quite small. This is on a 50 mil base. Um, so it wasn't intimidating at all uh, when I did it. Right, we're going to use some uh, disgusting slime now. And then just with a bit of sponge, I'm just putting this on. I would, having seen it dry, I would recommend actually mixing in a little bit of gloss uh, varnish into this just to keep it super slimy um, and just to keep it looking wet. I put down the first layer of disgusting slime and then it kind of, it dried not as glossy as I thought. So um, then I just went back over it with, um, you know, the disgusting slime mixed in with a little bit of uh, gloss varnish. And I think that actually it's a pretty cool effect. And again, it just goes with the whole saturated colors of the actual model itself. It just goes in for that vibe. And, you know, you could use red if you wanted to, but I was kind of like, oh, maybe they're hunting orcs in a, in a jungle, right? Something like that. And I thought it looked pretty cool. And then here, it is the Crutox Rampager in all its glory. Uh, I won't be doing another one of these unless you guys want me to. You know, say, can you do this in these these colours? You know, just put it in the comments below. Uh, but most importantly, I hope that you've learned a lot. As I say, these videos, they're not about entertainment. They're about teaching you guys how I would go about doing a particular model. And I hope it's been useful. Remember that the model can be greater than the sum of its parts you can spend more time on a particular part of a model and then cut corners on another part and it as a whole it will still look good i really hope you enjoyed this video don't forget to like it don't forget to subscribe and i shall see you on the next one